So as a creator or a video professional photographer, how amazing would it be to just be able to take this little guy right here, plug it into your system, and your files are already ingested onto your system, in the folders, sorted by camera, and ready to go for editing. What's up guys, Scott here from Alpenard Tech, and today is part two of the Creator Cloud. And today we're gonna go full auto ingest. So sit back, relax, and I'll show you how to get it done. Alright, so in the last episode, we proved the idea. One command ingest was working, no chaos. Today, it's time to finish the job. So this is the Creator Cloud. And what's going to happen is you will plug in an SD card and the system will handle the rest. No apps to launch, no commands to run, no folders to drag, and no decisions to make. So let's go back into our file structure. And you can see last week, this is exactly where we left off. We have our pool here. We have our file with our creator cloud on it. And we have our ingest file. And this is where everything went last week. And it's still here. So we also created our library. This is where our data will go. We created our log file. This is where our logs will go. This will be for proof and troubleshooting. And we have our scripts here. And this is where the automation logic is going to go. Nothing in the OS. It all stays here in the pool. So the OS stays clean and the workflow stays with the data. And I'll show you why I had to do it this way. All right, so let's jump into why I made everything live with the media. And this is the part that confused me at first. Once I found out that the Zima OS is immutable by design, the operating system is locked down on purpose. This is to protect me from me or you from you. That means you don't put your scripts in system folders like I usually do on a Linux build. I put them with my data. But at least this way, system updates will never break my workflow. And once I stopped fighting the fact that this was a lockdown squash FS file system, everything got much simpler. This is how auto ingest actually works. So we're going to go ahead and create our folder, our script here. So we're going to go nano. And we're going to create our auto ingest sh all right so this right here is my safety switch and basically it says that e means stop if something fails and the u means don't run with missing variables so basically it prevents the silent failures these two lines define the whole workflow the library is where the final media lands and the log proves everything the system does. This guarantees the library exists, so we never fail because missing folders. So as you can see here, everything the script does gets written to a timestamp log, and that's how I debug and trust the automation is working. So this function here, it tries to identify what camera the card came from. And that's how we get the sorting done directly into the library files by camera name. And then you can go down here and you can see if it finds the DJI file structure or folder name structure or image name structure. It will automatically put that in the correct folder. And of course, I have done this for all the cameras that I own. So I own the DJI, the Canon the GoPro, and my Sony. And again, this is making sure that all the files get put in their folders they need to go into. 
And if it finds a card or if I record something or get something from somebody that doesn't have the same file structure, then it'll just put it into its own folder, unknown camera, but nothing gets lost. Everything gets ingested. So right here, we're going to go ahead and create our ingest watch script. And we're gonna paste in our script here. All right, so what we got going here is we have our log state again. So our script is logging everything. Every action gets written to a log with a timestamp just so we know what's going on and we can prove what is happening and when it's happening. And then next we're gonna look at this bit of com code here. And what this is, is this function scans the system mount table. Anything under the media is gonna get ingested. So even if it's a USB stick or anything, just anything you plug in there on top of media. So what you see here is do not ingest our pool. Do not ingest the media file itself and do not ingest our Zima OS because we wouldn't want to back up our OS for any reason. So right here we have our list mounts state. This writes the current mount list into the state file, basically like a snapshot. It can now compare it and detect any changes to go ahead and start our script. And now this runs forever and it checks every two seconds. So we're constantly looping, checking for a new mount. So here it takes a fresh snapshot and compares it to the last one. If the mount table changed, something was inserted or removed. And then this is the key. We separate the new mounts from the remove mounts. So no, we don't ingest as we're trying to unplug something basically. It just ingests when we plug in and a new item shows up. This writes the new device and the remove device to the log. So this here, it writes the new device and remove device to a log. Gives me an audit trail, super important for a workflow system. If the only change was a removal, we skip the ingest. That prevents false triggers and makes this behave like a real appliance. So this is, a, this is our cooldown. Um, it's more in industry, we call it a demount timer but it's just a small timer that when you insert it, it waits a few seconds there before it actually does anything to make sure that the noise from the device plugging in. And then once it knows it's a good clean mount, we go here and we automatically run the auto ingest script. All right, so let's jump over here to a terminal and let's go ahead and shrink this down a bit. And here we're gonna have some commands running. So here I'm already monitoring every five seconds the auto ingest script. Obviously nothing's happening right now. We don't have an SD card in there. Let me go ahead and pop in the other camera here. There we go. And then we're going to live, all live, show you the demo here. So let me go ahead and run some commands here and I will clear my logs. All right, that will clear my logs out. All right, so over here, we're gonna watch the ingest file. And that is in watch mode right now. So that's one that's watching for, that's one running in the background that's watching. So we're just gonna watch that one. And we're gonna watch this one here. This is just, again, we're just watching the codes and this one's already running here. So all we have to do is take our SD card reader and we're gonna plug in an SD card. And here's the moment.
real time, live, no scripting, no running codes. It just automatically ingests the data. As you can see, this is a DJI file. And it is putting it in the DJI folder. And you can see we're still running. It's finishing up now. Now here's the beauty of the script. Because this SD card gets used between different cameras, it now detected that there's more files on it and they're in a Canon folder. So they're from a Canon camera. So now we have just ingested our DJI into its own file, the Canon into its own file. And then we'll go ahead and pull this guy out. And I'm going to throw in another card here. No scripts, no nothing to run. It's just running along in the background. Plug it in. It detects something new. What did it detect? The GoPro. So now it's ingesting the media off the GoPro. You can see ingest is running. And now ingest is finished. And it now transferred all of the GoPro files into the folder. So you can see we're finished here. Let's go back into the files. And you can see in our library, we now have three folders from right now. If we go back to our Zima, you can see our time is here. This is all real time, live, and our Canon with today's date on it what card it came from and we have a videos folder we have a photos folder and then any other miscellaneous that it pulls in it will pull off the card too and put it in its own file so we have that for all three of our cards a couple videos there no photos on that one and then we'll go back to the gopro GoPro should have both videos, yep, videos, photos, and then some thumbnails and stuff that it creates, but any other file that's there. All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Um, next week, Zima 3, we're going to be adding some automation to the board. We're going to sync it with our Mac Studio, with my Mac Studio. Um, or teach you how to sync it to anything that you do your editing on or whatever. So if you ingest it and it goes into your server, into your Zima, into whatever device you're syncing it onto, now it will automatically sync to your editing machine ready to go. So come back next week, guys. We've got a lot to do with this little board. It's fun. I'm enjoying it. And I hope you guys are getting something out of this. Thanks a lot.